Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a few different cards, seven cards that have gone up a lot in price. We will talk about why they have gone up in price and what to look for in future cards. Now this particular segment, I'm going to save for uncommons and rares and cards that you could have picked up for very cheap. So let's start with the Karak Clan Ironworks. This is a uncommon with no reprints, I believe. It used to be 70 cents and it is now part of a combo deck. Remember Kaladas and Aether Revolt were heavy artifact sets and whenever you have an artifact set, a card that relies on artifacts, mainly for infinite combos, will go up in price. So now you are seeing this uncommon for $12 where a few years ago, you could have got for under a dollar. Definitely something to keep your eyes on. Uh, cards that get stronger with artifact sets, because we will always have another artifact set. Okay, next we will talk about Dingaroo. And this is a card that was spiked up to $8 during the block. The first time Minotaurs was really pushed, quote unquote was in the Pharaohs Born of the Gods Journey to Nyx. Since that time, we have not seen any Minotaurs. And now in this new set, we have seen a few Minotaurs. And this is a not an artificial spike. I think $2 is where it belongs. It is a part of Homeland. When it, was, when it went to $8, $9, that was totally artificial. That was MTG Finance being MTG Finance and doing dumb stuff eventually the price point is went down, but it's not a 69 cent card. Just like the Ironworks, it can only get better as more cards are printed. There will always be more Minotaurs. What it's waiting for, it's waiting for a very, very expensive Minotaur. So far, the Minotaurs have been relatively cheap and inexpensive. Should there be like a 12 casting cost Minotaur, then it gets interesting. And then it has, so it still has a lot of potential to go up. Next, Surgical Extraction. What we can learn is Modern Masters 2015 has been spiking like crazy recently. So cards in that set, uh, given that were not reprinted, obviously, uh, have been going up a ton. So the time has passed and Surgical Extraction. Phyrexian Mana is incredibly powerful. Anytime you have free effects, even in Amaket, there's a few cards that you look at and you say, hmm, that's interesting. You can cast it for no mana. Anytime you have those abilities, you will have a very strong card that has the potential to spike in price. All the Phyrexian mana cards have pretty much spiked in price. They, they've they all on the whole just kept going up and up and up to the point that they had to ban probably the best one, Gitaxian Probe. Phyrexian Mana was a mistake, but they keep developing these other cards that allow you to cast stuff for free, and they have a very high ceiling. Now, always watching, this is one of my favorite cards and absolute favorite cards in Magic Duels. I love it. It's seen a small price spike, and I think it's going to probably go over $4 eventually. It's very good. Non-token creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have Vigilance. It's a great buff. Uh, now that we are in a creature-based set, we are in a set where there's embalming mechanics. It's harder to remove creatures because they can just come back. I think uh, this type of ability and also the Vigilance is surprisingly relevant. But it does say non-token, and that is... Mm, I don't know. It's... Interesting, the aggro deck should be powerful enough. This is definitely one of those white weenie aggros. I'm looking forward to playing that deck. I think it is viable, probably not as a tier one deck, but as a tier two deck, very viable. So when you look at powerful effects across the board, just like uh, League of Legends, global effects are very good. So Relentless Dead, it's been a while since we've, we've even mentioned this card. It used to be one of the premier cards and it hit $4.50 for a mythic zombie. Now you might ask, why are these zombies you know, coming back? Well, because Amakat has zombies. So it's a very easy trend. 
Armor Cat has Minotaurs, Armor Cat has Zombies, therefore cards, hopefully in standard, will go up in price based on the fact that you can make a zombie deck, the fact that you can make a Minotaur tribal deck. They seem very, very good because they will only make more zombies. They will only make more Minotaurs. They cannot make less Minotaurs and zombies than they currently have. So it's logic. And the same can be said. You know, one of the reasons Snapcast Mates is so good they can only make more instants and sorceries you want to flash back. They're not going to make less, although they did bang the taxing probe. The same with Phyrexian Manor. It's very similar logics, right? It's the same logics. Now, the minus one, minus one tokens. Luckily, I have a lot of Evening Tide. I don't know why I bought so much of it. I think it was in college, and in college, like, whatever. So a lot of these minus one, minus one counters in Evening Tide, including my number one card that has gone up, which is a common, have done ex extremely well lately because the minus one, minus one counters is a theme. So when you have Crumbling Asses, which is one in a black, Enchantment at beginning of your upkeep, destroy target creature with a minus one, minus one counter on it. It's easy for you, it's much, much easier in this armor catch set for you to put minus one, minus one counters on your opponent's creatures. And it's a lot more probable that your opponents are going to play creatures with minus one, minus one counters on them. So when you talk about things that get better in time, this could have only got better in time. So if you bought it for 40 cents and you just sat on it, yes, eventually there would be a set or a card, which minus one, minus one counters was very good at. And that gets me to my number one pick at the common slot. But this is the uncommon, so maybe I don't have as many of these. But the next one, I have a ton of, and it's part of a combo. So let's talk about Devoted Druid. And this card is $6 from $0.44. Cents. This card is crazy good. I play it with my Quill Spile or that, that Hedgehog thing, and it becomes, like, really fat. It just becomes, like, infinite, infinite. So Devoted Druid, one in a green, add a green mana, put a minus one, minus one counter on it, untap it. So this has the ability to put infinite amount of minus one, minus one counters if you can continue to remove it. And yes, this has inspired infinite combos in modern. Uh, and yeah, because there's creatures that want to eat minus one, minus one counters or need to eat them. And this one just continues to passively create them. As long as it doesn't die, it can passively create them until whenever. So definitely something to look for. I mean, it's very logical. Phyrexian mana, always good. Minus one, minus one counters. Should there ever be a set like Amar Cat, which likes that? Or, or encourages you to put minus one, minus one counters on your creatures or your opponent creatures? Then cards from Evening Tide and Shadow Moor go up in price because that was one of the mechanics. Same with Minotaurs. Whenever there is new Minotaurs, the Dingaroo will go up in price. And whenever there is a zombie theme, the zombies in the current standard set will go up in price. So anyway, these are extremely logical, extremely easy to explain things that happened. So leave me a comment below if there is a card you want me to review next time. And yeah, bye guys.